Welcome to episode 14 of the Wine Terroir, and today we are going to stay in Mount Etna and talk about the forbidden fruit of a Norella Cappuccio. Stay tuned. In this episode, we're talking about Norella Cappuccio. So Norella Cappuccio, as you may know, is the second red grape uh, in the Etna DOC, which is allowed to be blended into the Etna Rosas or, or red wines of Mount Etna. Norella Cappuccio is only allowed to make up at maximum 20% of the blend in an Etna Rosso, which leaves the remaining 80% for a Norella Mascalese. And often what you'll see is that the, the wines are typically 90 to 95% Norella Mascalese. Why is this? Well, for somehow this wine was de- this varietal was deemed as lower quality than the superior Norello Mascalese. I believe from my personal tasting experience that Norello Mascalese has a more complex aromatic profile, um, better acidity, better tannin profile than Norello Cappuccio, which um, definitely makes them more enjoyable wines and a little bit more food friendly. Also, um, lets them age a lot more. This one, any wine that is grown in Etna can still be declassified to an IGT or in the, in, in the, sorry, in Tassacion Geografica Typica uh, Rosso, which this is a red wine, um, of Terra, Sicil- Sicil- uh, Terra Sicilian, um, or uh, a Sicilian IGT wine. These wines are quite interesting. I haven't tasted a bunch, but there are a handful of these wines on the market that are worth exploring just to understand the grape profile. So these wines are typically added to add color to Etna Rosso's um, body as well as alcohol. However, when I look at this bottle of uh, and a couple other bottles I've looked at um, and their alcohol levels are usually around 13 or 13 and a half when you compare them to Etna Rosso's, which are typically around 14 and 14 and a half. Today we're drinking the Benatti, which is a great producer and makes one of my favorite white wines of Mount Etna. Um, this is their um, IGT Sicilia uh, Norella Cappuccio from 2013. So let's take a look at the color. Um, so definitely a little bit darker um, than the Etna Rosso I had in last episode. Um, I would call it a medium ruby, not, not t- a ton darker. There's a little bit of a, a pale ruby rim going on, um, nothing too crazy. I'd say medium intensity on the nose. First thing that jumped out of my out of the nose for me when I poured this wine was dried porcini mushrooms. Uh, but now I'm getting this kind of like red plum, um, kind of red cherry, like sour, almost um, like sarsaparilla or kind of like licorice I know sarsaparilla and licorice have nothing to do with each other. Um, this kind of like, um, er- uh, like herbal jelly kind of thing going on stewed berry compote kind of thing. It's not super complex aromatics but it, uh, or super pervasive, but they're definitely interesting kind of hearty, rich fruit f- profile. Okay, so let's give it a taste. So first thing I want to say, is that on the fruit profile, on the, the palate, the intensity is actually less than the nose. So, whereas medium intensity on the, on the nose, it's actually medium minus on the palate. The wine is definitely dry. Um, I would say medium, medium acidity is not um, crazy acidic. Uh, medium alcohol, again, we said 13%. The tannins are actually pretty soft. Um, they're medium minus. And there is a good texture to the wine, which is, you know, not reflected in the tannin. Like there's a weight, a hefty, velvety kind of uh, texture in the wine that is not reflected in the tannin. The t- you know, the tannins are, are there, they're fairly round and resolved, but they're not a lot of structure. And I'm, I am getting um, the body, I would say, is medium plus. So I can definitely see this adding body and definitely adding some color to that Norosa blends. Um, but I'm not getting a ton of like alcohol or bite and definitely uh, not adding any acidic profile or ten- ten- or tannin profile to an Oroso. So on the palate, um, yeah, again, medium minus intensity, still red plum, kind of, I get this like, um, like brick kind of, um, I don't know, 
I, I call it red brick. I don't know. I, maybe as a kid, I looked at red brick house. I'm not sure. Um, again, still the dried porcini mushrooms, um, a little bit of like kind of like stewed berries reduced and also um, something herbal. Like um, again, I'm, I'm going sarsaparilla here, root beer kind of notes, kind of medicinally flavors uh, like dimetab, um, that kind of grapey flavor. Uh, the finish is pretty short. I do not love the finish. Um, it's pretty short and, I'm, and it ends in this um, kind of like natural wine, kind of yeasty, uh, yeast, yeasty aroma that I, I, I don't quite love. I don't know that this is a, um, I don't know that Benanti is known for being super natural. Um, I think they are organic, but I'm not, sh um, I'm not sure what the production methodology is here. Um, yeah, finish is short. Um, body medium plus, um, you know, it's a, it's interesting educational wine to taste as a single varietal, just so you understand what it adds to the profile. Would I want to actually share this bottle with a bunch of people? No, I'd rather spend a little bit more money. In fact, this, in, typically these actually cost a little bit more money than the, at the Rosos because they're, they're small production. I mean, they don't make a, a huge volume of this to, uh, to service a market. There's not a nascent market for this type of wine. Um, it's purely an educational find. I would say I'd call this 84, 85, 84 points. It's palatable to good, um, you know, on the low end of good. Um, I, you know, it's it's not bad. I can drink it, um, but clearly doesn't add the the complexity, structure, tan, and acid that you that I love from Mountain wines, as well as a, you know a, a, a more aromatic flavor profile. So. Um, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned to the next episode where I'm gonna taste actually Bonatti's white wine that is one of my favorites. Hopefully it holds up, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, so stay, stay tuned. Um, please, if you like the episode, give me a thumbs up. And if you have not hit the subscription button, please bottom, bottom right hand corner. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, uh, at Wine Terroir for Instagram, at Wine Terroir com. COM uh, for uh, Twitter and Facebook. And thank you for watching. Cheers. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Mm -hmm.